Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Yes, this is Bishop Basil, your friend. Of course, for those who have not wished a Happy New Year, I want to say 2019 should bring you great success, not only in financial, but in the things of God, be more zealous, be more hungry, and be able to go after God with a full heart. And today, I have a scripture here that I want to read for you. And I hope that you can take it and I hope that you can get, receive something from it. In Mark chapter 9 gave us some instruction. Not only that, it gave us some deep, 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 deep spiritual food that is good for us. And the place in which I wanted to attack today is dealing with this gentleman who, with his dad, and of course, he had a dumb and a deaf spirit. And what happened, that deaf and dumb spirit would have taken him into various parts of his life so that he had a very uncomfortable life. Mark chapter 9 and verse 21 said, and he asked him, his father, that's Jesus asking his father, how long it is ago since this came upon him? And the father said, from a child, he had this spirit of dumb death. And um, often time he had cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do nothing, he said, have compassion on us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And the straightway the father of the child cried out and said with a loud voice, Lord, help my unbelief. And Jesus would have been able to help him. Today, it's amazing to see the kind of things that we as human beings go through kind of suffering, the kind of pain. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we ought to be very, very consistent in having a heart of compassion for those who are deaf and dumb. This man had a deaf, dumb spirit. That means that he couldn't hear, so he can't speak. And this is some of our problems today because we got a lot of people who could hear physically and speak. But according to the scripture, they are deaf and they are dumb. So therefore, this man had a deaf, dumb spirit, and he brings his child to Jesus. And Jesus now is referring to this man who asks this man, how long ago this child is deaf and dumb? And it may appear as though Jesus did not know that he was deaf or dumb. But the father need to communicate with Jesus as he asks questions. And the questions were very relevant for a distant time. And what happened? The father said to him, from a child, he had this deaf, dumb spirit. And not only that, that deaf, dumb spirit was controlled by a demon spirit. So what happened? This demon spirit often take him into the fire and into the water to destroy him because he was deaf and he was dumb. So the spirit wanted to take advantage upon him. But thank God there are people who have the desire and the ability and those that God has hand, sorry, special anointing upon them to deal with those wicked spirits. As I will often say to us, my viewers, that Satan is not a lover of us. The Bible says in John 10, 10, he come not but for the steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we understand very clearly that Satan desire is never to make us comfortable, but to make us miserable. But thanks be unto God that Jesus said in the latter part of that scripture, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So here is this man in this very much perplexed situation. He's very much in a place whereby he becomes so discomfort and so annoying of the situation to know that his son has a deaf, dumb spirit 
and the spirit world wants to destroy him. And coming to Jesus, he said, Lord, I need help. I need help. And in return, he said to Jesus, if you can't do nothing for me, please just have compassion on me. But help me. Could you imagine? If you cannot do anything for me, Jesus, all you got to do is have, have compassion on us. If we reach the people that have the, the most difficult things in their life that is hard to deal with, in a matter of fact, if they have cancer or whatever sicknesses they have, and we cannot help them as a church, then something is wrong. Then the question is asked, where is the power that is released to us through dominion. Dominion is a word that I take very serious. In the Garden of Eden, you understand that the Bible says, and when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them dominion over the animals and dominion over everything, except the spirit realm. So Satan thought that he could have tricked them and get away with it. And dominion means power, or power authority and the other part of it mean or the use of power are you hearing me somebody so if you have dominion which is power and authority and there is no use of it it means that your power is in vain why do we claim to be Christians Christians are followers of Christ and the same thing that Jesus did, we also are to do the same thing. Every born again believer, as long you are is in Christ, and you accept Christ as Lord and personal Savior, you have dominion or you have power. So the, the thought here is that if you can't do nothing for me, have compassion on me. And there is a word that Jesus used here that is very important. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. All I want is to drag some faith out of you. All I want is to get you to the place, not that you are believing with me, but have faith and believe that whatever I'm about to do, it is done. He said, if you can only believe, all things are possible. Meaning that it is possible. It is possible, not impossible, but possible for your son to be healed of a dumb, deaf spirit. I went to a church not too long ago, higher from where we are. And there was a little boy in that service. And I went to pray for him and the mom said, Bishop is not hearing. I said, what do you mean he's not hearing? She said, he's not hearing. He only hears from his two ears. But I got the belief and the faith in Jesus that as long as I pray for you, you are going to receive, you will receive your hearing. And the Lord said, pray. So I begin to pray in the name of Jesus. I said, I cast out this deaf spirit. I cast it out in Jesus' name. And I begin to click my phone because that is what the Lord is telling me to do. And as I begin to click my hand, I said, are you hearing that? And he said, I walk like about 10 feet away from him. And I'm speaking and he's hearing me. Are you hearing me somebody today? Isn't this God that we serve is a mighty God? He's a wonderful God. I had another case again in church while we were praying for a, a young woman. And I, I, call out the, I call out the condition. Somebody is deaf in their left ear. And the child came up with her mom. And when she get in front front of me I lay hands upon her in the name of Jesus and pray and God instantly healed her about the silly thing about it so after God instantly healed her I walk a little distance away from her and say are you hearing me and she said yes are you hearing me and she said yes are you hearing me and she said yes so I said to the mom I said I want you to testify what had happened she said something went down in her ear and she went to somebody or a doctor and they placed a tweezer in the air and bust the eardrum so she wasn't hearing, but thank God she left healed. You see, it's not Bishop Basil that was that do that. It is Jesus that healed her. Today, you may be in the house with the same problem. You can't hear, you can't see, 
you cannot speak. I am believing God for you today, knowing that the Bible said, whatsoever we ask in his name, it shall be done. The God that we serve, he's a God of might and power. He's a God that do everything according to his will and according to his purpose. Oh God, your will be done. Your spirit take full control. The Bible said, when the father said, had compassion on me, and he began to cry, and the tears was coming from his eyes. I believe the same thing that Jesus would have did for Lazarus, but Jesus wept. Maybe in this case he did not wept. But the thing that I'm about to say to us today is to understand where there is a dumb, deaf spirit. All these are connected to demonic spirits. You want to tell me, man of God, I have a spirit in me? You see, you got to understand that demons can demonize you. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about possession. I'm talking about demonize. It can demonize your body just like Job. How Job was demonized by by a deep by Satan himself, whereby boils and so many different things and so many different sicknesses on our body, like cancer and all these kinds. These are spirits that can be demonized, where we can be demonized by spirits. Well, they can afflict our body and make us feel as though we are nobody. But let me say this to you. They may be able to afflict your body, but not your spirit. Smith with the words say he had a problem with appendicide. Appendix. And the appendix erupted him. And not, would not. And he was so weak. And out of it as though he was going to die. The doctor came and, 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 and said to his, mother, to his wife, I cannot operate on him, but he will die. And a young man came from Norway and lay hands upon him and said, In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. I cast out your appendix side spirit. Leave him! And he said, Immediately, he was healed. And get up. After how much months could move, get up from his bed and go about doing his plumbing business. There is nothing that Jesus cannot heal. I am telling you, I am assured that he can heal you. All you need to do is to believe. Believe in our Jesus. He is the healer. Not Basil Francisco Edwards. And while on that, at this moment, I really want to thank God for the constant and for the speedy healing that he has been healing my wife. Of course, she couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, but now she is doing better. She may not walk the speed that you are walking, but she's walking, taking her time, and she's talking. I want to thank God. I want to bless God for you who continue to pray for. I believe in the same God you believe in. He's a miracle working God. Is somebody hear me, please? He's a miracle working God. He never changed. Aren't you glad that he have never changed? So here is this young man, can't help himself. Daddy cannot help him. But here is Jesus on the scene. He said, if you only believe, all things are possible. And he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And Jesus approached that young man. And he called the spirit by its name. Every abnormality has to do with a spirit. You deaf, dumb spirit. Come out of him! And enter no more. That's how we got to deal with those spirits now. When you tell them to leave, you gave them a command because you got the power and the authority is in you. You tell that spirit to leave, it's got to leave. And don't enter again. So if you got to cast them out, you gave them a command not to enter again. And they got to obey you because they cannot re-enter if you tell them not to re-enter again. Because what happened? You see, you got the power and the authority. Power, what you're doing, you're using the power or 
the use of the power against his unclean spirit. You see, let me say this to you, saints of God. Or let me say to you people who even are not saved, but you need to have this power. The only way you can have this power, you got to give your life to Christ. Are you here, Mr. Mighty today? Or if you live in a backsliding life, you will not be able to use the power that God has given to you because you are in a backsliding life. So hear me. As long as you are born again Christian, the power that Jesus invested into you, remember power and authority because you have dominion, that power, the only way it can be demonstrated, you have to use it. Go find some sick people, some lame people, and the greatest is the cancer. I'm asking God for dunamis power beyond the point where I can cast some cancers out, lick some cancers, beat some cancers of our people body because it's the main number one killer in our island. Cancer! And I'm so shocked and so disturbed by our Christian fraternity. They are dying from cancer, but yet they do not want nobody to know. You are a Christian. You have cancer. Call for the brethren. Instead of dying in premature death. And let's fix that. Let's let those demons know you're not in control. Let's fix that. Are you hearing me, somebody? Let us fix that. And the only way it can be fixed is when you are able to address it and deal with it. You're not fixed no other way. Are you hearing me, somebody? It cannot fix no other way but the way it ought to be fixed. And the only way it can be fixed is in the name of Jesus. No simon, no simidime, no pananga water, no flags, no, no, no bell ringing a bell. Are you hearing me, somebody? These are rituals. You believe by faith. How it's operate? Through faith, you believe by faith. Faith is the only thing that guarantee you. Faith guarantee you. So when you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, it guarantees you that when whosoever you pray for, lay hands upon, they will be healed. They shall be healed. Or will be healed. And I thank God for that opportunity. Lay hands upon the sick. Getting them delivered. I love to cast out demons. I like to, are you hearing me somebody? I like to get them out of people's life. You see, because I got somebody inside of me that lives inside of me and his name is Jesus the Christ, Yahshua. Are you hearing me somebody? I love Jesus. And because of that, any demon possessed case that we know about, we can help you. All you need to do, just come to the church on the rock, Bamboo Hill or Lekito, whatever your condition, you have sicknesses, come! We will pray with you! Because I know that's what God called us to do. Lay hands upon the sick. Lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So Jesus cast out that deaf, dumb spirit and the child was restored to his dad. It's hard for you to know that you're born from a child, from a baby, deaf, dumb for all your years until relief has come, until you were set free from it. Today, I want to give God thanks for you. And I want to do some praying today. And the reason why I want to do some praying, because I want to pray for you today that God's going to set you free. Father, I lift this woman before you who has this culture, oh God, who have this thing at her throat. And Father, it's there, it's not moving. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cast out that culture, oh God. I cast it out. I command it to leave the church right now. I pray for that lady, oh God, who is deaf in her left ear. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God, she will be healed. Not she will be, but I pray that God, I cast out that deaf spirit out of her ear in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, if you feel, you can put your hands up on the TV while I'm praying. God, I'm praying, Father, for this man who have this with a foot, oh God. Maybe this saw on his foot that is not healing at all. And the doctors are telling him, I will cut that foot off. In the name of Jesus, 
I command that foot to be healed. By the blood of Jesus. I pray for this woman with this stomach problem, oh God. Who has this stomach? And she just keep belching, belching all the time. Bur burping all the time. God, Father, I feel as though there is a lump inside of it. Right now, I command you, loose her, out of her. Now, in the name of Jesus. Rebo shekebobo ramantayara. Imondo ikorabo kotiela bokondayara. Sendoya rebo kosheto ya rahamundo. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out right now. And for some of you, if you feel that while I'm praying that your belly is moving, just go to the toilet and start coughing, and immediately it's going to leave you. Deliverance take place even over the TV. Right now, I bind every diabolical spirit. I bind every demonic spirit. I bind every sex spirit. I bind every spirit that at night while you are sleeping is coming to interfere with you and having sex with you. I bind it! And I set you free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, I declare God's peace upon your life. And upon all your, every one of your life that are feeling this comfort, feeling this courage, in the name of Jesus, I declare God's peace upon your life. I declare God's love upon your life. I declare the power and the anointing rest over you in the name of Jesus. And today, Lord, we give you thanks for all those, even for those who are sick, God, and listening by, by the program, listening even through the program, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you're going to heal them now. I, our faith is charged. And oh God, Father, he said, if you can only believe as I pray, Father, I thank you for your healing hands. Thank you for your healing hands. Thank you for the power and the authority that you have released unto us. So by your stripes, they are healed. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Today again, I want to thank you for listening. It's always a privilege praying and encouraging you. The Bible said the fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. And even as I come to a close, there is two things that we must understand prayer and intercessory prayer we have seven weapons five is defensive two is offensive you have your loin good with truth they are all in Ephesians chapter 6 and from verse 12 go down and say finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and he said um, for we rest not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers and darkness and then tell you that you must put on the whole arm of God. The putting on of the arm of God is what will cause you that you'll be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. And he tell you how to put on the arm is the armor. He said you're allowing God to shoot your, your, your you know, the breastplate of righteousness featured with the preparation of gospel, and you have the helmet of salvation and the shield of faith, which is all these are defensive weapons, but you also have and of two offensive weapons that has to do with your mouth. The word of God, which is the sword of the spirit and intercessory prayer. May I tell you what is intercessory prayer? It's something that we don't look into, but it has the value just like even reading the word of God. Intercessory means going between God and the object. Going between God and the object. So you're going on behalf of the object, praying to God, and God will not tell you no. God will always answer your prayer. And I just want to leave this scripture with you in Luke chapter 18 and go see the unjust judge and the, the, this poor widow who will go to him and say, avenge me of my adversary. And he said, I don't fear God, no man, but what happened because she continued to weary me. I want you to look at that word, weary me. He said, let me give her what she desired. And the Lord said, hey, but this unjust judge said, shall not God, shall not the God that we serve, do the same for us? He said, even though it bears long, or it seems as though God is taking a long time, the Bible says, as long as you come to me, I will answer you. I will answer you. And I want to declare God's peace upon you for all those who continue to encourage me. Sometimes I want to say hello to 
Many of those who I don't know, but you know me because you see me over the TV. Some encouragement say they like, uh, they like to laugh when I'm speaking. But the whole thing about it is that the message is about to give you that tenacity and that spirit of desire to go forth for God. My desire is that you go forth for God. Amen. To all of you that are there, we want to bring up a few people past uh, Apostle Charles in Trinidad. I want to say I love you very much, even though I have not heard from you for a little bit. I want to say past uh, Sister Sammy. I'm all the way from children again to blessings to you and the entire household. And all the ministers of Tobago, who is my friend, some of them, yes, even though we are not closely acquainted, I want to say God's blessing to you and the entire family. And may the Lord give you peace and may you have a prosperous year. May everything that you do, let it be God's plans for your life. Not your plans, but let it be God's plans for your life. And may the Lord bless you. Let me say the peace of God be with you. Amen and amen. Of course. The numbers will be on the screen, so you can feel free to call. You can call us at any time. If you call and you didn't get us, call again. And God bless you. Shalom, the peace of God with you. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards. Invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network.